Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Quick Med, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be talking about neuroleptic malignant syndrome and serotonin syndrome and how to differentiate between these two on the USMLE. This is a very high yield topic, so let's get to it. Alright, let's start with neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is a rare idiosyncratic reaction to antipsychotic medications. And with USMLE, it is important to know which medications are responsible for NMS versus serotonin syndrome. And antipsychotic medications will involve dopamine blockade, and so that is the neurotransmitter that is affected with NMS. And with your antipsychotics, your typical and atypical ones can both cause NMS, but your typical antipsychotics are more likely to do so. These include your haloperidol, pimazide, trifluoperazine, flufenazine, thyroidazine, and chlorpromazine. And you can remember the last few because of the suffix azine. So how does a person with NMS present? Some signs and symptoms that you might see in your test question include fever and mental status changes, tachycardia and hypertension, and something that is pretty characteristic to NMS includes bradykinesia and especially muscle rigidity, which can be described as lead pipe muscle rigidity or stiff arms and legs or difficulty with bending the legs on your test questions. And why this happens is because in the periphery, antipsychotics cause calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum within the muscle cells, which leads to rigidity and then muscle cell breakdown. And so sometimes with NMS, what you can see is an elevated CK along with this. So how do we diagnose NMS? It's really based off of the history and the physical exam, and elevated CK can also help as well with this. To treat NMS, you need to stop the offending agent immediately, and then you can use dantrolene as well as bromocryptine, and you will need to know both of these medications. Dantrolene works as a muscle relaxer and so can help with the rigidity that we already discussed. And bromocryptine works as a dopamine agonist, and this basically will reverse the underlying pathophysiology behind NMS. So let's now contrast this with serotonin syndrome, which is an adverse reaction to medication that leads to a buildup of serotonin in the body. And so as you could have probably guessed from the name, serotonin syndrome involves elevated levels of serotonin. And medications that can do this include your SSRIs, such as fluoxetine, paroxetine, sertraline, citalopram, and acetalopram, your SNRIs, such as venlafaxine and duloxetine, your tricyclic antidepressants, including amitriptyline and nortriptyline, as well as your triptan, such as sumatriptan, which is used in migraines, and your monoamine oxidase inhibitors, such as phenylzine and selegiline. And selegiline is used in Parkinson's disease. I tried to list out some of the more common medications that you will see on your question stems, but just know that there are more medications in each of these classes than are listed on this slide. And oftentimes on your question stem, you might see more than one of these medications listed because serotonin syndrome often involves a combination of these medications. And with serotonin syndrome, a patient will often have signs and symptoms that are very similar to NMS, which is what makes them difficult to differentiate between the two. They can have fever and mental status changes again, as well as tachycardia and hypertension. But unlike neuroleptic malignant syndrome, where we talked more about rigidity, with serotonin syndrome, it'll be more of a hyperactivity. So you will see things like myoclonus, hyperreflexia, and tremor, compared with the more rigid, uh, bradykinesic sort of state that we discussed with NMS. But I put an asterisk here just because I want you to make sure you don't rule out serotonin syndrome if somebody comes in with rigidity because muscle rigidity is also still possible here. With serotonin syndrome, you're also likely to see sweating and diarrhea and less likely to see that on an NMS question stem. The way that you diagnose serotonin syndrome is with history and physical exam, just as with NMS. Treatment also involves stopping the offending agent and starting ciproheptidine. Ciproheptidine is an antihistamine that also has serotonin receptor antagonist properties, and so it can definitely help when there's elevated serotonin in the body. The way that I remember ciproheptidine uh, for serotonin syndrome is that they both have an S sound. All right, so just to review, it can be difficult to distinguish between neuroleptic malignant syndrome and serotonin syndrome on a question stem because their signs and symptoms can be very similar. What I would rely on is trying to identify the medication that is most likely involved in the patient's presentation because if we think it's an antipsychotic leading to dopamine receptor blockade, we can think more of NMS, whereas if it's a serotonergic medication leading to a buildup of serotonin, then we can think of serotonin syndrome. 
And it is important to know the names of the medications in particular because the question sim will not give you a general medication class, but will throw in specific medication names. The signs and symptoms can be very similar again, with both presenting with fever, tachycardia, and hypertension. Muscle rigidity in an elevated CK is more likely to be characteristic of NMS, but again can also present with serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is most likely to have myoclonus, hyperreflexia, tremor, and diarrhea. You treat NMS with dantrolene and bromocryptine, and you treat serotonin syndrome with ciproheptadine. Again, you can use the S sound to help you remember that ciproheptadine is used with serotonin syndrome. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please make sure you like and subscribe. Good luck with studying, everybody.